Mekong. All life here depends on the river. When the river is in a good mood, it gives the people on its banks drinking water and an abundance of fish. It carries floating markets and is a commercial lifeline. But when the river is angry, it floods entire towns. Those who live by the Mekong respectfully call the river mother of all waters. It inspired an international team to undertake a daring adventure. Its goal, to be the first to travel the length of the river in inflatable boats, 3,000 kilometers through six countries, from Vietnam to China. In Vietnam, the Mekong is as lively as any city. In Cambodia, it is the scene of a water festival. Young women practice a dance called Apsara. Rainforests conceal the temples of the Khmer. In Laos, the expedition meets working elephants and sees prospectors panning for gold. Buddhist monks beg for alms. The team struggles past waterfalls, repairs its defective engines countless times, and ultimately is forced to split up, the only way the group can reach its goal. The source of the Mekong is located in China. The river flows along the Burmese border before crossing Laos to become the border to Thailand. Its delta is in the South China Sea in Vietnam. The expedition begins in Ho Chi Minh City, formerly known as Saigon, an up and coming metropolis. 30 years after the end of the Vietnam War, interest in communism is fading. All indications are that Vietnam will open its doors to the once hated West. Skyscrapers shoot up behind restored cultural monuments. The dynamic atmosphere is reminiscent of French colonial times. But in the tumult, there are also places of quiet and stillness. Vietnamese enter a Taoist temple to pray. Es gibt Tage, da bin ich ein bisschen vorsichtiger und ein bisschen nervöser. Schlafe vielleicht ein bisschen schlechter, weil ich einfach weiß, das Wasser ist sehr schwierig. Aber das sind ja Herausforderungen und die sind zu bewältigen. Schau mal. Die Donde Fair Condition. The comforts of civilization end in the port of Ho Chi Minh City. Andy Lehmann will be doing without air conditioning for the next 3,000 kilometers. He is the captain of the Mekong expedition. With two specially prepared boats, the crew hopes to travel from Vietnam to China, something no one has ever done before. Planning and preparation took two years. The boats were custom made in South America. The shock absorbing hulls are flexible. Engines with 225 horsepower keep the boats on target against the strongest current. Thank you very much eh, for helping. Hi. Full speed ahead, past container ships and cargo boats through the Mekong Delta. Andy Lehmann has attained a personal goal. Thank you, Simon. It's that we have done this. That we are in Saigon and losfahren. Achtung Welle, vom großen Frachter. The Swiss Andy Lehmann has explored the Amazon and Orinoco in South America. At 51, he gives the Mekong a try. Ich bin früher den schönen Namen nachgereist. Sumatra, Borneo, Hong Kong. Das war für mich immer, das waren immer so exotische Namen, die musste ich in der Schule lernen. Da habe ich mir mal geschworen, als ich 14 war, alle diese schweren Namen, die so exotisch sind, die muss ich mal besuchen. Hatte dann die Möglichkeit, auf dem Mekong mit einem Lastenboot vier, fünf Tage raufzufahren. Und da sage ich zu meinem Kumpel, sage ich, Mann, diesen Mekong muss ich fahren. Und jetzt bin ich da und ich meine, mein Herz ist übersprüht. Ich bin absolut happy, dass ich überhaupt auf diesem Fuß sein darf. Und mein großer, großer, das ist wirklich einer meiner größten Träume zu erfüllen. 
An expedition like this one can only succeed with the help of someone like Armin Schoch. This specialist in expedition logistics has been organizing unique tours in Southeast Asia for 25 years. Man muss an alles denken, man muss an die Security denken, man muss daran denken, wo die Boote liegen über Nacht. Man muss äh, über Nachtungsmöglichkeiten für uns selber denken. Wir müssen an Benzin denken, können wir tanken, wo tanken wir. Die Distanzen selbst, die sind zum Teil enorm. Äh, die größte Distanz, die wir zurücklegen hier, die ist bei etwa 310, 320 Kilometer. Flussaufwärts ist das Seville. In the densely populated Delta, the river is as busy as a major highway. Later, things get lonely. The next fill-up has to reach the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh. Here, the Mekong is more than two kilometers wide. The many forks of the delta unite in a single immense current. The Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh celebrates its water festival. 400 teams of paddlers race dragon boats along the river. For three days in November, the city teams with millions of visitors. The dragon boats are 30 meters long. Each boat has room for up to 65 paddlers. It is an honor for any Cambodian city to have a team in the race. The Mekong's reversal of its flow is unique. During the rainy season, the river carries so much water that its tributaries reverse direction. The water backs up, flooding the land and depositing mud that renews the soil. In November, after the water festival, the rivers return to flowing downstream. While the paddlers are still competing, the masses pour into the carnival. Cambodia is one of the world's poorest countries. Child labor is everywhere you look. Today, at least, these kids can enjoy a treat. Phnom Penh is normally quiet by 10 o'clock. During the water festival, the people party all night. Thousands crowd the space in front of the royal palace, hoping for a look at the head of state. And there he is, visible just for a moment, Norodom Sihamoni, King of Cambodia. And Phnom Penh goes on celebrating. In the 19th century, no European knew the exact course of the Mekong. Around 150 years ago, a French group under Dudard de la Cray embarked on an expedition to survey the river. Their goal was to find a trade route from Saigon to China. Difficulties and hardships plagued the adventurers as they struggled upriver. The expedition leader died, most likely of dysentery. After two years, the rest of the group finally reached the Chinese border. Commercial use of the river was out of the question. The river was much too wild. And today, nothing has changed. On their journey upriver, the French expedition detoured to the temple ruins of Angkor Wat, a city of the gods. Stone remnants of the mighty kingdoms of the Khmer. The reality surpasses my wildest dreams, wrote the expedition's artist, Louis de la Porte, in his diary. He described gigantic trees and folding stone walls in their roots. The naturalist Henri Mouot prepared the Mekong expedition for the majestic site with the words, Angkor Wat is more overwhelming than anything the Greeks or the Romans left us. In the last 150 years, little has changed. The ruins are still hidden in the Cambodian jungle. Here we see many sandstone figures of dancers. Their images honor both gods and kings. And the Apsaras are still around. With intense discipline and years of training, 
young women learn the difficult steps. In these artists, the culture of the Khmer goes on living. Their dances tell stories of old Cambodia. Every movement has a traditional meaning. The waterfalls of Khon Papeng in Laos put an end to the French expedition 150 years ago. Any hope of using the Mekong as a trade route to China were dashed by 15 kilometers of waterfalls, the Niagara of Southeast Asia. In only four weeks, Andy Lehmann and his crew are doing what took the French expedition two years. Even with their modern equipment, they too must find a way around the obstacle. Team logistics expert Armin Schoch has workers build a boat ramp and organizes two cranes and two trucks. Each boat weighs 800 kilograms. They are removed from the water, transported several kilometers, and placed again in the Mekong. This maneuver alone costs 30,000 euros. The total cost of the expedition for Andy Lehmann, Armin Schoch, and their sponsors adds up to 180,000 euros. But they have no regrets. Die Szenerie verändert sich ständig. Die Leute, die entlang des Flusses leben, verändern sich. Morgenstimmung am Fluss, Abendstimmung am Fluss, Mittagshitze, Kälte in der Nacht, wenn man auf dem Boot schlafen muss und so weiter. All das sind Aspekte, die sich täglich, stündlich fast verändern und das Ganze erst interessant machen. What drew the others to the Mekong? Einfach, weil ich in Europa schon viele Flüsse befahren habe und zum Zweiten, weil mich immer das Land hier interessiert oder die Länder interessieren. Und dann bin ich der Meinung, eröffnet uns alle natürlich schon gewaltige Perspektiven, die Welt halt doch wieder mal mit anderen Augen zu sehen. Manchmal braucht man einfach so einen Schubser in eine andere Welt, um sich wieder mal auf das Wesentliche zurückzubesinnen. No, I think it is, I have two great motivations. I mean, first of all, of course, it's a great adventure to, to explore Mekong River. That's no dream I had actually even before and the told about his project. But secondly, also, it's a possibility to discover this cult Asian culture, which I'm really, really interested in. And also, these people, I think, they have a lot to learn us. I mean, the, the generosity, the friendliness, and also the, the welcome that you come. The expedition team plans to travel 3,000 kilometers upriver. After a successful start in Vietnam and making good pace through Cambodia, the problems begin to pile up in Laos. Again and again, underwater rocks destroy the propellers. Poor quality gasoline clogs the filters. The engines fail. They are repaired and fail again. With a disabled boat in tow, Expedition leader Armin Schoch discusses with Andy Lehmann how they might be able to get spare parts. Just short of the Thai border, the situation becomes undeniable. One of the outboard motors is past saving, and the motor on the boat in front won't start. With hard work and some help from a fisherman, the team with skipper Mats Wallström makes it to the shore. Uh, okay, good. All right. Yeah, good. Bye. Bye. Laotian hospitality. The stranded adventurers get some funny looks, but they are accepted as a matter of course. The women of the village cook sticky rice, fried eggs, and chicken soup for the whole team. <laughs> After dinner, the men of the village sit together. Before long, everyone is asleep on the wooden floor. The next day, the crisis summits. One of the boats can't go any farther. It's impossible to get spare parts. Will the team split up? Serious discussions. Bueno, 
I, I still hope charged. that that's my solution is working not, well. That's easy. And I catch you that's up much in the easier end. said yeah. than done. We are not lucky, but no, but luck change. But yeah, 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 but I thought luck will change a little bit earlier. I don't really believe in that anymore. Now we have to face reality. And maybe that could be also another possibility: is, is, is to split the group into two groups. One group that goes ahead and one group that stays with you. That's what's a possibility. The decision has been made. The team will separate into two groups. They divide up the tools. To repair the motor, Andy Lehmann will stay behind. Ich denke, es wird schwer, sie aufzuholen. Aber wenn ich näher komme als ein Tag, dann werden sie auf mich warten. Wir haben ein gutes Team, sehr kompetentes Team im ersten Boot. Und meine Person ist mehr gefragt, ein bisschen an der Technik da mit Einbau. Ich kann die Leute nicht alleine machen lassen. Then again, I mean, then we'll see how, how far we get. But uh, we can never be sure. We, we, even though with uh, all the team uh, together, we've had uh, massive problems so far. So, I mean, it's a lot of uh, some knowledge, uh, some experience, but also quite a portion, uh, big portion of luck. The first boat gets a head start, accompanied by local guides intimately familiar with the Mekong. In Laos, the expedition experiences the most beautiful stretch of the entire journey. Villages cling to the riverbank like swallows' nests. The limestone caves are filled with thousands of Buddha statues. The first boat has problems just like the second. Impurities in the fuel are making the engine's life difficult. The crew has to stop over and over again to clean the filters. Its progress becomes very slow, only 15 kilometers an hour. In northern Laos, the weather changes. It turns cold and starts to rain. Meanwhile, back in Muktahan, Thailand, Andy Lehman searches for a metal worker to repair a propeller damaged by rocks. The expedition leader explains to an interpreter that the engine is still out of commission. Viel, viel schlechtes Benzin, viel so ganz, ganz Mikrosand. Ja. Aber das Problem, warum das die Techniker da sind, ist Ich habe meine Gearbox, meine ja, Getriebe ja, ja, ja. ist äh, explodiert. Ja. So, jetzt bringen Sie mir den Unterteil. Ja. Kann man heute reparieren? Ja, ja, kann ich. Eine schon, halbe ja. Stunde, Stunde ist ja. es drin. Okay. Ja. Es hat viel gekostet, aber wir haben das Teil heute da. Diese Jungs, die sind jetzt zehn Stunden, zwölf Stunden unterwegs, haben gestern Nacht um 9 Uhr das Teil abgeholt im Airport in Bangkok und sind jetzt äh, ja geil 10:30 Uhr sind sie da The team has been on the river for over 2000 kilometers Here in the wilderness of Laos they are nearly by themselves The river was never as lonely as this Deep in the wilderness, women try their luck in the mud. Standing in the water, they pan gold for hours at a time. In a good month, each of them might find only one gram of gold. It's not much, but it's enough to survive on out here. Laos once had a very poetic name, the land of a million elephants. Even today, one can encounter the huge animals in the forest or at the river. An evening bath is part of the elephant's ritual. The mahout, or elephant trainers, 
will typically stay with one animal for its entire life. The expedition spends most of the day on the river, not landing until just before sunset. Luang Prabang, city of monks and temples. Luang Prabang is the most important religious center in Laos. Today, the city attracts more students than ever. They come from all parts of Laos and even from Thailand and Cambodia. 2,000 monks and novices live in 29 monasteries. Wherever you look, the city is dominated by the orange color of the monks' robes. The first European arrived in the city in 1861. The same man who discovered Angkor Wat, Henri Muo. He wrote, The setting is unusually beautiful. The mountains to the north and south surround the river, creating a rounded valley or amphitheater. Ten years ago, UNESCO declared Luang Prabang a World Cultural Heritage Site. Since then, tourism has increased every year and brought economic growth. Theravada Buddhism became the official religion in the 14th century. Craftsmen settled near the royal court to work on the temple decorations. Later, the Communist Party did its best to eliminate this aspect of Laotian history. Now the study of Buddhist texts is experiencing a comeback. Every Buddhist man is expected to enter a monastery at least once, even if only for a few weeks. Monks are always free to leave. As a good omen, many young Laotians become monks for a brief time just before their weddings. In the evening, the main street of Luang Prabang becomes a busy market. Women from the Mong tribe, a Laotian mountain people, sell cotton, silk, and silver jewelry. Lamps are another local product. The Hmong make them from mulberry bark. 6.30 in the morning, the monks begin their begging for alms, or dagbat. Every day they beg for their daily bread, mostly sticky rice and baked goods. The monks file down the street in order of rank, from the oldest to the youngest. They do not express thanks for donations. In Buddhist belief, the giver is obligated to thank the monks for the chance to do a good deed. The Mekong expedition does not stay long in Luang Prabang. There's still a long way to go until it reaches China. On the agenda for tomorrow, the Golden Triangle the junction of Laos, Thailand, and Burma. The Mekong unites two separate worlds. Cargo canoes amble upriver, barely beating the current. Passing them, brightly painted bullets. These speed boats, powered by automobile engines, need only a few hours to reach the Golden Triangle instead of days. It doesn't have to be as fast as the local speed demons. But Andy Lehman and his team wouldn't mind being a little bit faster. Northern Laos is cold, and the problems increase every day. The boat keeps getting stuck on sandbanks. Impurities in the gasoline have made the engines fail yet again. Morale is at a new low. The group fights its way upriver, kilometer after kilometer. At this point, Andy Lehman must take the first group's inflatable northward. While he was back in Thailand repairing his own engine, the first boat's engine failed as well. To keep moving, the team switched to speed boats, leaving the inflatables behind. The new equipment is fast, but loud and uncomfortable. Even bad weather can't discourage the team. China. Here we come. The team arrives in Guan Lei, 
the first Chinese city on the Mekong. After six hours of a brutal journey, even a gloomy karaoke bar is a relief. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Laos, just this side of the border to Thailand, expedition leader Andy Lehman has serious doubts about the project's success. We are at the next knot kilometer to the Golden Triangle. This is at Shenzhen on the border of Burma, Laos and Thailand. It's the famous Golden Triangle. Unsere Motoren laufen nicht gut. Wir haben heute Morgen wieder einiges gemacht. Und es sieht ganz, ganz so aus, dass die Expedition nicht China heißen wird, sondern Saigon Golden Triangle. Du hörst den Motor. Äh, dann mache ich wieder A. Äh, und dann geht es wieder 20 Meter weiter. Dann mache ich wieder A. Äh, dann mache ich wieder äh. The Golden Triangle, the damaged boats have to come out of the water. Ach, die Franzosen haben eineinhalb Jahre dazu gebraucht. Warum sollen wir nicht auch ein bisschen länger brauchen? Wir haben bessere Technik, wir haben moderne Mittel zur Verfügung. Ja, wir haben angefangen und wollen es zu Ende führen. Und der Entscheid war schwer, aber ich lasse jetzt meine Boote da und äh, kein Fighter. The team changes boats. With a speedboat that can do 70 kilometers an hour, they head along the Burmese border toward China. Gigantischer Fluss, böser Fluss, guter Fluss, schöner Fluss. Alles, was man sagen kann, ist ein sehr spezieller Fluss. Noch nie so etwas gesehen. Noch nie einen Fluss von so vielen Seiten kennengelernt. Ist wie eine Frau mit allen Launen und Schönheiten. The banks are populated by the tribe of the Aka. Women unload a cargo boat carrying heavy sacks, while the men are spectators. However, Andy Lehman helps an old woman haul rice back to her village. <laughs> Locals and visitors are equally amazed at each other. The entire clan comes to say goodbye. The Mekong was not always navigable. In the 20th century, the Chinese dredged a shipping channel with dynamite. Now rusty freighters steam up and down the river, and the speedboat pilots have to watch out for their bow waves. After four weeks and 3,150 kilometers, with stops in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand, the expedition has reached its goal, China. I have my stempel in Visa, I am the happiest man on the world. We have it. We have 3,000 and more kilometers on the Mekong. And it was a strange feeling. I never thought that this dream will be realized. We are happy. Einfach happy, happy.